Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Istanbul. Well, some of us who build on the Filecoin network is celebrating Filecoin Day every day. We're so excited to share this experience for all of you that are learning about the ecosystem for the first time. And so for those that might be new to Filecoin or just getting started, uh, there are three phases of the Filecoin master plan, as Juan may have shared in the past or even yesterday during the lab week kickoff. Phase one is building a large, the world's largest decentralized storage network, which we've already done over the last three years. We just celebrated Filecoin's third birthday in October, and we can't wait for the following years to come. But phase two is all about making sure that we can onboard and safeguard humanity's most important data. And this is what I want to deep dive into today, is how we can master phase two, how we can make sure that we're not only onboarding data, but making sure we can do so with quality data. And, and finally, and most importantly, how we can get to that level, level of scale. So before we get started around data onboarding, I do want to recognize that as many of you guys know that are in crypto, the market right now is in a transition phase. Um, it's obvious that we are in more of a bearish market now, but in Web3, as all of you guys know, we need to be able to withstand bear markets. The best projects right now are the ones that will survive bear markets. And as an ecosystem, we've already done this four times already. You can see in, um, in early, uh, 2013, 2014, that was when IPFS just got started. File, uh, Protocol Labs was founded in 2014 through Y Combinator and many other phases after that. In around uh, 2017, the Filecoin white paper was announced and you can see all the other um, new developments from IPFS, the P2P um, going mainstream. And finally, we are at today. So you can see over time, there is upward growth, but great things take time, and we're excited to build great things with all of you. Over the last three years since network launch, we've built a robust data storage network. We have over 3,400 storage providers all around the world that have onboarded um, nearly 16 exabytes of available storage, and now we are trying to onboard data with that available storage. And we are just getting started. Um, over the last year, we've made sure that most of these storage providers are actually taking active deals. We have 33 million active deals to date. And on the right, you can see our favorite thing to do in the Filecoin ecosystem, throw on logos. So you can see on the right, we have a number of featured data clients. Uh, many of these organizations are diverse, but pretty world recognizable. So why are our clients choosing Filecoin today? Well, the most obvious factor of why you would choose a decentralized storage network is actually because of storage costs. Today, we see data as important as any daily utility like electricity. If I were to take your cell phone 40 years ago and throw it into a pool, you probably wouldn't care because you have very limited data on there. But today, if I were to do that, the first thing you would worry about is all the data you would lose. And every month, people have increasing data costs. I know how much I've paid to iCloud to date. Uh, the costs just get higher and higher. And so using Filecoin, we are around 90% less expensive than traditional cloud providers. People also love Filecoin for the ability to improve data durability. We have multiple entry replication. And so you will never really have a single point of failure uh, compared to centralized providers. Oh. And then you can also verify, I don't know what, what's happening in the slide, you can also verify the storage of data. So yesterday on stage, I talked about the importance of content integrity, and this is one thing that is so important is being able to guarantee that. Um, there are a number of tools today that help with quality of data. So for those that have been in the Filecoin system, ecosystem for a little bit longer, we have tools like Singularity that really allow for large data sets to enter the network. We have tools like 
Delta that help make storage providers um, lower the barrier to find deals. And then we finally have tools like Spade to really do uh, proposal data management. I talked earlier about content addressing, um, so I'm gonna skip that. Um, but I think another important factor is meeting regulatory requirements. Today, more and more uh, customers as well as cloud providers are, really do care about meeting local regulation. And with Filecoin, we can specify where the data is actually stored geographically. Today, if I were to upload a photo on my iPhone, goes to iCloud, I have no idea where that data is stored. And finally, this is something that we all care deeply about, which is understanding our carbon footprint, but also having transparent reporting around it. And with Filecoin, we can see energy consumption in all of our data centers around the world. We've also funded amazing initiatives like Decent in the Netherlands, where they built one of the most amazing decentralized storage provider systems, all using solar panels. And the Filecoin value proposition is also resonating today with data owners. In fact, 41% of organizations have experienced high or unexpected egress costs. 53% of organizations were actually able to use public cloud as data storage, um, again, because of regulation and compliance. And then 83% uh, wanted geographic control and as a consequence, 55% um, of people in a survey done um, just earlier this year have lost critical digital information they cared about. 71% have lost data from issues like link rot, where the link just doesn't work and the data is missing. This also happened with the Supreme Court documents um, in a finding by the New York Times two years ago. Most Supreme Court documents are dealing with link rot. And then 42% um, would like to experience fewer disruptions caused by outages or platforms. If you guys remember nearly two years ago, Facebook actually went down for a day and the stock plummeted significantly. But a lot of small business owners that were relying on Facebook also lost their businesses with that. And so again, that durability and reliability is so important. So what are some, my favorite use cases for storing data on Filecoin. Well, in one area is, is definitely cutting edge research. So uh, one example of this is one of our storage providers, uh, Seal Storage, they're actually here during lab week. They worked with UC Berkeley to store dark matter research. And this is actually a lot of data sets that normally would bankrupt a school <laughs> or any institution. Um, but working with SEAL, they were able to onboard 400 terabytes of neurodetector data. And um, we are continuing to work with many research institutions around cutting edge research like this one. The other example I love is really what it can do in medical research. Uh, as many of you guys know, medical research is a very sensitive topic. And just earlier this year, um, one of our storage providers Base in Australia, Distributed Storage Solutions, they worked with the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute to be able to upload cell cellular image and raw research data where they really wanted access control as well as a layer of security around making sure that research could be, um, could be shared with the right types of partners and who it was shared with could be actually traced. And finally, we're all here <laughs> during DevConnect. There are a lot of different ecosystems here in Istanbul this week, but we have worked with other chains such as Solana to back up their data. Solana for the longest time was only storing their data on a centralized solution. And we worked with Solana to be able to provide an additional Web3 native backup. And so to date, around 500 terabytes of Solana data have been uploaded to the Filecoin network. So where are, we in the, where are we with the network today? Well, as you can see on the right, this is a graph of all the storage provider IDs to date since network launch. If you see the, the red arrow pointing up, um, that is the amount of deals that have been taken. Actually today, 
over 47% of storage providers are taking active deals to store data. However, less than 1% of that is paying deals. And in order for us to really reach a magnitude of scale, we need to start thinking about paid storage and how to get to paying deals. And so what are we doing around this? We are right now at this point in this graph, the chasm, where we are part of the innovators and early adapters, and we are entering the phase of early majority and late majority adopters. And so throughout today, you'll hear from many different speakers about the way we're building towards enterprise adoption, SaaS models, and also AI. And we wanna make sure that we can really, uh, really grow at a rate that can be competitive to traditional centralized cloud providers. But good things take time. I, I, I said this earlier. If we think about object storage and the history behind it, object storage took 15 years to be where it is today. In the early stages, very few people knew about it. It wasn't something that most consumers understood. Again, we're celebrating year three of Filecoin, and we want to recognize, you know, we are along this trajectory of building a brand new decentralized network and making sure that we can have the right applications and stacks on top of it. So 20, 2006, object storage was announced, and then the on-ramps didn't occur till two years later, and then 2015 to 2020, uh, that's when Web2 apps were able to actually support object storage. And now that we've seen object storage from 2015 to today, we've seen a lot of Web2 apps be able to utilize it and run natively in the cloud. And so what am I, what am I trying to get to? We need to build the bridge between Web2 and Web3. And how do we get there? Well, in phase two of the Filecoin master plan, we are all about making sure that Filecoin can get to mainstream market users. We want to increase Filecoin adoption, and we also want to make sure that we can get reoccurring revenue. How do we get there? Um, this is one of our solutions here. So you can see here one of the major problems, like I've illustrated, is marker, mar, uh, market users, they don't actually want to change their current workflows. And so they will be using existing Web2 tools to get there. And one of the areas that we've been building in the Filecoin ecosystem is making sure that we can integrate Filecoin into existing Web2 apps. And so this includes new APIs, orchestration. Um, so one of the areas that we announced just a few months ago is the DSOR REST API that allows for just that. So if you are interested in testing the DSOR REST API, or give feedback on GitHub, that is an area that we would love your help around. The second part is Filecoin data preparation is complex. As you know, uh, we don't control how data is prepared. It is the amazing work of all of our storage providers. And so we want to make sure that we can make the data preparation process as, as easy as possible. And so we have tools like Singularity, fill drive, et cetera, that are getting there. And we would love your feedback on additional tools you would like to see and additional tools you would like the community to build. And finally, deal making with multiple providers is really tedious. So one of the areas we've also worked on is making sure that there's a deal making service that can automate the ability to do deal distribution. So tools like Spade um, allow for this. So if you are a storage provider or interested in being one, we would love you to sign up on the wait list to really test out tooling like Spade. So to recap, what is phase two? What is the most important call to action? We want to bring web two apps to the Filecoin network. And in order to do that, we must make sure the right tooling is in place. And we want to make sure that we can integrate web two apps and data management stacks via the network. And so the best thing that we would love for your guys' help with is really help us scale the Filecoin REST API. And so um, we would love your guys' ideas around ISVs, uh, different object storage stacks that we can work with. And 
for you to suggest those to me, to me and to the rest of the ecosystem, you can scan the QR code on the right to get started. So thank you so much. Um, I hope all of you guys have an amazing Filecoin day. I'm going to turn the stage to our next speaker. Great.